Hey everybody, how's it going? In today's video, I'm gonna walk you through the Maui.graphics library. Let's go. I've got this little demo app here, and this is this clock you see here that's actually animated. That's gonna be the code we're gonna talk through. All of that code is in the GitHub repo down below, so don't worry about trying to type as we go. I'm just gonna explain the code and you can grab it from there. But this is completely drawn in Maui.graphics. And uh, I will also say that just because the name is Maui.graphics doesn't mean it's only for Maui. You can actually use this in any .NET application. So in fact, to prove it, I've got some F sharp code that I wrote that is, uh, you know, using Maui.graphics and it is just a straight .NET application. Uh, and yeah, there you go. It, it writes the, the clock out to a file. I didn't go through the whole steps of doing the animation and stuff, but there you go. Um, and in fact, if you would like to see more F sharp content, please let me know down below because I love F sharp and I would love to talk about it more. So <laughs> anyways, so yeah, you can use this anywhere and that's what we're going to go through today, this clock. So let's start with how, how these, these kinds of things are structured. So uh, you have this concept of a drawable. So you'll have an object called a, uh, it inherits this I drawable interface and I named mine clock drawable and it'll have the, the one method it has to implement is the draw method. And the way you pull this drawable into your view is through this uh, tag called the graphics view and the graphics view will have a drawable and in our case we pass it a static resource clock drawable and the way we create the static resources through this content page dot resources tag and i have this namespace called drawable that contains my namespace and i'm grabbing an instance of a clock drawable object and then i'm giving it a key of clock drawable so I can then reference that in the drawable for my graphics view. Okay, pretty simple. Then this graphics view, basically every time it is loaded or paints, whatever you want to call it, it will draw your drawable. So that's the XAML part of it. Let's look at the code behind real fast. So the redraw clock method is just a method I use to basically redraw the clock. And we'll talk about that in a second. So this main page, all I'm doing here is I've got a timer object, a, a system.timers.timer, and it's ticking for 1000 milliseconds, so one second. And every time it elapses, I want it to run this redraw clock method. And then in here, all I'm doing is I'm grabbing the graphics view from the name in the XAML. So if I go back to the main page, I wrote xName equal clock graphics view. And then in the code behind, I'm using that to grab the graphics view. And then I'm calling this invalidate method. And what invalidate does on a graphics view is it, uh, as it says here, informs the canvas that it needs to redraw itself. So basically every second I'm ticking with the timer and I'm running the redraw clock, which is telling it that it needs to redraw itself every second. So then if we go look at our clock drawable, basically all I'm doing in the clock drawable object is I'm drawing the clock with the correct you know, position of the hands. So let's talk about that because that's the kind of Maui.graphics uh, focus part of this. So just to talk through this code real fast, I've got a date time object, current time, date time equal now. I've got a center point. So this is centering the clock at a specific point. Obviously, if you were doing this like uh, for responsive UI type stuff, you would, you would do some math here or something. I just, for demo purposes, just did 200, 300. And then I gave it a radius of 100. So in your draw method, the two things that are given to the draw method that you get from iDrawable are an iCanvas object called canvas and a, rec floating, a rectangle floating point object called dirty rec. And canvas is essentially your blank canvas in the graphics view that will you can then quote paint on. And then the dirty rec is uh, actually just gives you information about the canvas itself. So you could probably use information in dirty rec to, for instance, get the center point of where you want, you know, dirty rec dot width divided by two, that kind of thing. So there basically you take the canvas object and you call a bunch of methods on it and, you know, set properties on it. So I set a stroke color of colors dot aqua colors comes from Maui dot graphics dot colors. Easy enough. And then there's an aqua color. There's all kinds. It's the same colors that you would see if you looked in XAML. And then I have a stroke size, which is just the thickness of each line. And then I call this draw circle method. And this is actually the outer circle uh, right here. So yeah, we're doing the clock center point. So draw circle takes two, you know, there's other overloads, but this one takes a point F of center and a float radius. And our radius, we just set to hundred here. So that's hundred pixels, whatever you call it. 
And so, yeah, this is my clock, my outer ring. This is actually an inner point in the circle. You see this little circle in here. That's what this is. And then canvas.stroke size. This is for slightly smaller for the hands. And then we get to drawing our hands. If you if you've never done you know clock math before, uh, it's a little involved. You got to do some. There's some sines and some cosines. But in each of these methods, basically all I did was I pass it a date time for the current time, a radius and a center point for the hour. You know I adjusted down to 12 because it, it gives you all the way up to 24 for hours. I adjusted it down to 12 just so the clock made sense. <laughs> and then right here I'm getting the angle in degrees. So that's the hour times 360 divided by the number of possible hours. And then var angle is actually the angle in radians, which you need because you're working with a circle. And then hour shorter is, I just wanted to make the hour hand shorter. So it's, it's right there. And then I have the math to get the outer point of the line because you always know where it's gonna start because it's starting from the center, right? So I wanna get the outer point for the line. And that's just some math. I actually just found this formula online and then adjusted it to what I needed. Uh, but it's basically just your your radius times math dot sign, you know, uh, of your angle and radians plus the center point, uh, you know, the X property of center. And then you have hour shorter, the negative hour shorter times math dot cosine of your angle and radians plus center dot Y. And you need floating points because we're, we're doing a point F object. And then you pass it back. And that's pretty straightforward. The other methods are the exact same, except they use minute and second. And they divide by 60 instead of 12. I could have probably wrote just one method for all this and, and just parameterize a little better. But hey, whatever. It's quick code. And then I get those points. And then I call the canvas.draw line, which just takes two points. And it draws a line between them. Easy enough. And so I've got clock center point. For the center and then hour point for the hour hand minute second and that's it and you draw a clock that way so the the main takeaways really are your drawable class is going to be where you draw your graphic and if you want to update that graphic because of for some reason you know whether it's some input of data or uh, in my case the the data input is the time changed you would then call a graphics view dot invalidate which tells it hey that that drawable is no longer valid, redraw it. And so you you draw it and then you get an updated drawable and it creates an animation basically. So you could make your own animations this way. Yeah. And so you've got your canvas object and then you can do there's all kinds of stuff you can do with a canvas object. You can set alphas, you can draw all kinds of different shapes. There's you can draw text. So um, you can take in text and write it to the screen and, and do all kinds of transformations on it and stuff. You can do a fill circle or a fill ellipse, which basically instead of drawing a circle would fill it in as well. You can do all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of methods out here. Uh, you can do stroke dash lines, which is cool. There's there's all kinds of, of things you can do. Uh, if you wanted to, just to note, if you wanted to animate this at all, for instance, what you could do is you could take your graphics view and do, um, you know, some kind of rotate or something. Rotate to, you know, that kind of that kind of animation. So you take the view and you animate it just like you would any other view control. So cool. Yeah. I mean, you know, this is a quick introduction just to kind of get you up and running, but hopefully that helps. Yeah. It's, you know, it's not very complicated, but I just wanted to show you kind of the architecture of you've got a graphics view, you've got a drawable, you've got the graphics view attached to the drawable, and then you create a drawable. And I was just putting them in these drawable folder and then, yeah. And then you, you redraw it when you, when things update and you want to draw it differently. So obviously, you know, this is a decent amount of code for a clock. Um, if you're doing really advanced stuff, it can get pretty, you know, advanced. I, I plan on doing some drawable stuff because I want to make some kind of custom controls that way. I want to see how that goes. I know there's other ways to make custom controls in .MAUI, but I kind of want to draw my own and see, you know, what kind of pretty things we can do with UI. So that's how I plan on trying to use it. But yeah, there's all kinds of ways. If you want to make a clock in your app, there you go. That's how you do it. What's going to be really fun is every time I cut, you're going to see the time jump. This was a terrible idea to put a timer on the screen. But anyways, so now you know Maui.graphics. You have a quick introduction. Obviously, you know, the sky's the limit in terms of what you want to do. But do you know how to do SQLite database stuff? Do you know how to do REST calls in your apps? Things like that. You know, those are kind of the core foundational things. And if you don't, I have a series that may help there. Uh, right here is going to be a playlist where I've kind of gone through 
uh, building my first app in .NET Maui. It's a very basic app at this point. We were going to do more to it, but it has a SQLite database in it. It has uh, API REST calls. It has all kinds of stuff. And I kind of show you how I did it. You know, there's other ways to do it, but this is how I did it. And yeah, it may help you learn that stuff. So if you, if that interests you at all, click there and let's get on to the next one.